What's up YouTube? It is your boy Lopes and welcome back to another video. And today Alex and I uh, as always, always started on the car. Today we're working on my 1999 Civic Si. We are case swapping this with a K20Z1 from NARSX. We are putting my freshly painted subframe in and we're gonna be assembling some parts, probably brake booster, clutch master, and how to do all that since we're converted from automatic to manual. Let's get into the video. I hope you're excited. Let's get it. We have the subframe jacked up. We painted it at work. Unfortunately, I didn't do it on camera. Alex and I did it after work. It looks just a little dirty because it kind of got wet right now. Uh, but we painted a gloss black. It is a primer and uh, the primer and paint combo where you just spray it. We sanded it down and painted it. It's going to look pretty good. At least it's going to contrast nice with the bay. Nice, <laughs> nice black and red there. Uh, I'm gonna give Alex a hand here. This is an EG subframe, and you gotta make sure you use the EG subframe bolts into the EK, uh, because I believe the size of the subframe is different than the EK one. I'm gonna give Alex a hand doing this right now. It's gonna be kinda of hard to capture, uh, but pretty much you're just gonna line it up and bolt it in, but let's get it, guys. It's coming along, it's coming along. Before we start, chick chang. Pretty much the subframe's in. Only one bolt gave us an issue here, so uh, as you see, started kinda of messing up. So we're not going to put this in, I'm going to get a new bolt, I don't want to risk it. Uh, but the subframe looks really nice, the contrast is really nice against the red. We did a pretty good job. That was spray paint also, I don't have the can here, else I'll show you guys exactly. Uh, but it was a, uh, remember the, the name of it Alex? What? Of the spray paint? Uh, it's not, it's, it wasn't, du <laughs> it wasn't duplicate color, it was the other one. Rust-Oleum. It was a Rust-Oleum primer and gloss black and we sanded it down and we painted it. It just looks dirty because that's just watermarks because it did get wet a bit, but it looks pretty nice. Uh, now I guess you want to do what, the brake booster? Yeah, we can do the brake booster. Yeah, so we're going to do the brake booster, we're going to do the clutch master, and uh, I'm still waiting on brake lines and all the grommets for the back firewall and stuff. This is the brake booster, we painted it and stuff at work, sanded it down and whatnot. Unfortunately, I don't have room here to be painting because I don't want to overspray any of the car. It's, uh, it's been a pain in the butt, but this came out pretty good. Let me unwrap it and I'll show you. Once again, we use the same paint that we used for the subframe for the brake booster. We sanded it all down and we painted it. It came out pretty decent, not going to lie. Once again, this is just spray paint. This is two cans or two coats of spray and I just kind of want to touch it up and make it look a little nicer so it doesn't look all danked up and stuff there's just a little bit of dust on there uh, but yeah I'm pretty happy with the results what do you guys think down below another cost-efficient way of doing it sand it yourself and spray it uh, this is where the brake booster goes Alex is gonna hold it on this side he's wearing gloves so that we don't get it too dirty and then I'm gonna put the brake pedal through here um, bolt them up and then use this little cotter pin and a pivot bolt or whatever it's called and lock it in place and uh, wish us luck. booster is on right now Alex is putting on the control arms yeah so I finished uh, screwing all that in it looks really nice being gloss black also uh, Alex is working on this right now I'm gonna give him a hand uh, yeah so we're pretty much just remounting the control arms and then uh, I've picked up some Hasport mounts EKK2 mounts that go with the EG uh, DC subframe I think that in here is gonna look really good. I could have gone cheaper mounts, but I bought them used, so I did save some money also. Uh, but I always go pretty good quality when it comes to mounts and axles. We're just gonna reassemble the control arms back on, and yeah, we're gonna keep the OEM ones for now, maybe upgrade them in the future. We are slowly but surely assembling, so we're gonna get closer. And then we're gonna clean the motor, and we're actually gonna try putting the motor on a dolly. We're gonna lift it with some straps. Alex and I are beasts, kind of, maybe, I don't know, we'll see, uh, but you guys will see. <laughs> all right, so we've got all that on, we just finished assembling it, uh, Alex is just do basically tightening up that last bolt there, into look at that, man, it looks pretty good, no? So far, so good. The subframe, 
with the brake booster and everything with this fresh painted bay, fresh painted subframe, fresh painted booster. Now we just gotta put the actual cylinder on there pretty much and find the bolts for that. This is the brake master cylinder and we're just going to reassemble it, maybe clean it up a little bit and reassemble it over there. This looks so, so nice. I'm not even gonna lie to you, but yeah. Progression, progression. We're just using a steel brush to clean up some of the rust along these parts over here. It's not gonna be absolutely perfect, but it's definitely gonna make a bit of a difference. I'm actually really liking this color combo right now with the red and black. It just looks super fresh. It's kind of amazing to know this is a 1999 Civic Si in 2021, and it's looking like this with no motor or nothing, but you get the gist of it. All right, so we're reassembling the brake master cylinder here. Just two bolts, pretty simple stuff. Uh, maybe one day eventually I will change all the hardware on a lot of these things to make it look nice. Unfortunately, these bolts are a little rusted, uh, but it is what it is. Like I said, budget, budget, budget to a certain degree, and that's where we can save some money instead of buying all brand new stuff. I'm telling you, the most nerve wracking part is legit assembling it. Right, before we just we didn't care about all this work into this bait. We're all nervous putting shit together. God damn. <laughs> I, I don't know if there's an exact order in how to do this shit, but we're just kind of going with it. There's no exact order, but we're gonna put the mounts in and see how they look. You're gonna have a nice little bling bling, but you can't tell I'm pretty excited about this shit. I cannot wait to be cruising around in this and just hitting some good old VTEC. So you guys can see 96 and uh, 2000, zero, 00 there, mount kit EKK2. I bought these used and I went with the 62A. We don't have an insane race car yet, so you guys think it's gonna look good in the car? I certainly do, a little bling. It's gonna shine nice if you can see there. Uh, and I are being extra, extra safe. We put some tape over the holes uh, where the brake fluid comes out just so it doesn't leak because if it does leak, we might lose some paint. The guy I bought this off, he just used it for mounting purposes. Very gentle, buddy. <laughs> oh, shit. If you guys can't tell, this is the first time we've ever done a nice bay like this where we really care about how everything looks. <laughs> Before this, it was just whatever. There's two mounting positions for these mounts. You can go a lower setting or a higher setting. I it believe. Intercepts. <laughs> I believe the lower setting is the best setting because if you use the higher setting, it intercepts. It intercepts. No, when you put your motor in, it sits a little higher and intercepts, as Alex is saying, intercepts with the hood and you might have some hood clearance issues. Uh, the motor does definitely sit a lot lower. Does it? Yes, but I recommend, uh, I think it's one of those bash bars or something like that. And that it go, intercepts. And that goes underneath to protect your oil pan and stuff. That's going to be something probably in the future that we're going to do and look into. But yeah, oh yeah, Lopes merch. Got some sweaters out. Message me, Instagram, right around here. If you're interested, 45, local pickup. Shipping can be arranged to anywhere. Hit me up. Buddy, this guy is risking for the biscuit. This thing's just hanging here and he's hopping in, doing this and that. Okay, so this is the rear motor mount, obviously. Uh, we are bolting her up. Damn, got a little bling bling in here. It's looking good. Just in retrospect, something I wish we did earlier is as you saw, we had a bucket that we put everything in. Well, that's killing time now. If we labeled all the bolts and bags or something, we would have known exactly what bolts you have to use because you have to reuse your OEM bolts when it comes to the, the EKK2 mounts from Hasport. Uh, they give you some brand new ones, but you're gonna have to use the OEM ones for here. So this side, they are 17s and we will do this side afterwards. I believe they're 14s and we have to find them all. And I think these are the guys that we're gonna be using. Uh, so take it from me, when you're dissembling your motor and everything inside your bay, keep things as organized as possible, especially things like engine mount bolts and all that type of stuff. So it's looking pretty cool. It's looking nice. <laughs> Eventually, I may do a whole dress up kit with all these bolts and make it look super nice, but I feel sturdy the next day. Welcome back to another part of this crazy episode. This is many days meshed into one because, you know, we start working on the car then we stop for whatever reason. But today, Alex and I are here. What's so. up? You can see we're rocking our K-Tune sweaters. Thank you to K-Tune for sending these out. Uh, we are going to do the K-Tune CMC, uh, the clutch pedal, and then we are going to maybe do the steering rack. 
I'm going to pick up a proportion valve from Clean Street today. And then after I can run the brake lines and do all that too. I bought brand new brake lines from Honda. I can show you guys all the part numbers of what I bought and I'll show you else what else I bought. I bought OEM bolts for the mounts. So they look really good. I'll show you guys how they look. That is the difference between the old ones and the OEM ones. Much better in my opinion. What do you guys think? Check that out. Same thing. Just gotta tighten them down. But yeah, let's get into it. Little by little, this thing is coming together and this bay is looking quite nice. Flash. Freshing. This is the K-Tune CMC end line. This is our clutch line. We have the K-Tune CMC for the EK and we have the CMC reservoir and inside here is the little K-Tune sticker. We'll do that afterwards. But I think this is gonna complement the bay with some of the polish and all this good stuff really, really nicely. That is exactly what I got. I'm super excited to put this on. So if you guys can see this right here, we're gonna have to cut this out so that we can poke the pedal through the bolts in or the studs in so that we can bolt it up. So I'm gonna cut that with a sharp exacto blade and see how it goes. That was actually pretty easy. I just used a blade, cut just a little around it to get my finger underneath and I was able to pull it out and now we have the hole exposed for the studs for the pedal and the clutch master to assemble. To do this now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna need someone on the engine base side of the car, the firewall, and he's gonna hold the clutch master there. And then I'm going to go from underneath here and align it with the clutch pedal. And I'm not gonna wire it up. Uh, I really don't care to, and I don't think it's gonna be an issue. Uh, I think that just affects you pressing the clutch down to start the car, and if I don't have to press it down, it's all good. And eventually, we're gonna get the security shifter right over here with the QD shifter plate. You got the plate? No, not yet, it's coming. And we're gonna modify this automatic to work. So stick tuned, stick tuned. Stay tuned for that, that's gonna be definitely exciting. Uh, that may be one of the first that I know of doing that shifter on an automatic car. You okay in there? Not fun, uh, bling bling. Doing this uh, top bolt for this clutch, not gonna lie. You get it in yet? Uh, just you know, using every extension in the book to get this top Holy. bolt because my hands don't fit up here. But you know, we're getting there. The clutch is almost in. I'm just working my way, trying to get this in. And if I get this on camera, that'd be amazing. But I don't think it's gonna happen. Probably oh, not. Oh. 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 For video purposes, I did. <laughs> did you? No. All right, all right, all right. The car officially has a clutch and a reservoir. As gracefully as I looked, lined there like a baby buffalo. It was not fun. I'll show you guys what we had to do. It's a little bit of a tight spot. So if you look, you have one bolt here and you have a bolt at the top over there, which you can't really see because it's hard to get the camera angle. Then you push the rod through, tighten the nut. This is what adjusts your clutch. And then at the very top, all the way up here, which is probably impossible to see, at the top of the clutch somewhere in this vicinity of the area, there's a bolt there too, and there's three 12s. So two nuts, one bolt. But look at that. The automatic car has a clutch pedal. I am super excited in the clutch reservoir. Look at that. Big things. First automatic conversion. First case swap. First many for Alex and I. And I'm super happy just to see that. Get over it. My steel toe moccasins. So obviously it's not gonna spring back because we have no pressure on it, but it is. Yep, yeah. over there. It is operating. Amazing. So this is the manual rack from Rock Auto. Looks pretty good so far. Pretty, pretty good. So we're gonna be using the power steering bracket and the rubber bushing on this. Put it on this, then use this on top and hope for the best. And hope it works out. A lot of guys do it. So we'll see what happens when we do it like that. Alex currently is messing with the steering rack. And if you're wondering why that's all wet, cause I spilled shit. So we decided to put on the steering rack after putting on 
uh, the subframe and not doing it together. Uh, the only thing that's interfering, giving us a bit of problem, is this elbow, right? The steering rack elbow, whatever you want to kind of call that. That cannot be on while you're trying to put it in there. You do not have enough space. So Alex is going to take that off and we're going to put it on afterwards once it's in the car pretty much, right? Yeah. And that's it. So it's a 10. We're loosening that bad boy up and we're going to put her in. The steering rack is officially in. Another part of the puzzle that is in. I just came back, as you can see in Alex's hand, that's a non-ABS proportion valve because we removed the ABS on this car. You notice this little gap here, it's because I don't have the rubber pieces that belong here. Um, I'm gonna figure something out to get some adhesive to close the gap that goes into the car and then figure something out with that. Uh, tried ordering the rubbers from a site and kind of got screwed, but it is coming together eventually. I will get new control arms and all that, but for now, we've got a lot of new parts that will go onto the car and we kind of did it on somewhat of a budget. This budget isn't becoming as budget friendly as I thought it would be, but it's getting there. I think, I think there's a raccoon in my green bin. Oh, he was in here. The bags are all open, buddy. He was in here. Ah, oh, what a mess. All right, so uh, we removed the old brake lines that were cut in there, and now we are putting the new ones in. And I'm really happy with how clean that actually is. We almost caught a raccoon, which is pretty cool. Alex, do you remember what it is or? To be honest with you, it's the way the, the lines are. Yeah, basically the only reason why what's the difference is because of the way all the lines sit. Because most of these lines, like all these other lines here from the front and everything, they all go to the ABS. So then some lines are shorter, some aren't. And then, yeah, it's just a whole mix up. So basically, non-ABS and then you'll have the proper one line that goes down to here the other line to here and then the other line to here and that's it so you just have one line technically coming down this way I see. versus the ABS where you got a whole bunch of lines over here yeah and it's yeah it's definitely cleaner it's gonna be the first time I'll have a car without ABS so there'll be maybe a bit of a learning curve I'm not sure if I'll I guess I'll notice it's more for heart I think like hard braking right that's when you'll notice it probably locks up a little more or it doesn't assist you with, you know, braking pretty much. But this car is gonna be a whole new experience in general. I've never driven a K-Swap light car before. I've been in many, but I've never actually driven one. So this is gonna be exciting stuff. Look at this. We got the CMC in now. We got a brake booster. We got the proportion valve. Life's good. Life is good. This is a little complicated. We have a power steering eg subframe and it came with a power steering rack so what we had to do because we converted to a manual rack we had to keep the power steering bracket if you can find a manual rack bracket that'd be ideal mm -hmm. but if you don't just what we did was we reused the power steering bracket and and the bushing we kept the bushing from the power steering bracket and then you just put that bushing on top of this uh, bushing that comes with the manual rack and then you push this into it and you bolt this together and then that's it. Some people say they might have binding issues, some don't and a lot of people say that's just what what they did and it works perfectly fine. So I can't see this being an issue at all to be honest with you. I think it would be, I think it would be perfect. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so that's a little information on what's going on with our subframe and power steering. I'm going manual rack, that's a power steering EG subframe. The brackets are different sizing. And uh, yeah, I've talked about the gap in between there. We don't have the rubber for that. I'm trying to keep you guys informed as much as possible. A lot of these things, like when I watch certain YouTube videos, I can't find the information. They're in forms and you can find them in forms, uh, but I'm trying to basically Till he gets as much info as we can and things that we come across and issues we personally come across. We're getting there. I'm learning a lot. Alex is teaching me a lot and uh, I'm pretty happy.
guys, so I'm gonna take a photo of all these guys. You can see them probably quickly, but if you're looking to do the ABS delete and you need the lines from Honda, I'll take a photo of all these and I'll write down all the part numbers in the description below. Thank me later. installing the new brake lines I got from Honda and uh, I will show you how they're all routed afterwards uh, we're just gonna figure this out real quickly and then I'll show you guys in the next clip here we are all the brake lines are ran as you guys can see we have them aligned over here they're not in yet because we're probably going to do some braided lines not sure yet maybe uh, but this is how we routed everything I'm gonna slowly go through it just so in case you guys need to see the two top ones right here, uh, one and two, I'll just point, it's probably easier. One and two are your uh, rear brake lines. And then on the right side here, if we follow it like a maze, this is all your driver's side, right? Yep. The two right ones are your driver ones. One runs up to the brake master cylinder, one runs through there, through the grommet, and it goes towards where I just showed you guys. And then on the left, one runs to the brake master, and then the other one runs all the way into here with the grommet holding it. And as you guys can see again, it is sitting right there. Progression, I think. Yeah, if you want to show them, we're all tucking the wires for over here. So we'll be tucking, I'm not sure if they know yet, we'll be tucking our headlight harnesses and everything even the wiper motor wiper motor and all this we're gonna be talking all that so this is a diy I started, I started drilling a hole there cut that out and then there's like another hole on the inside here i have to widen this a little more and then widen the inside hole down over here and i'll be able to feed the wires through here and then i'll be able to come up through here connect to there yeah we, we didn't have the greatest dremel but it did the job buddy you're gonna do some headlights harness tucking tucking Tucking, headlight harness tucking, we'll be extending wires and doing all that stuff too. Uh, that is his uh, his specialty when it comes to electrical, not mine. So when it comes to that, he's gonna explain that. I do have the K-Tune tucked harness. Thank you to K-Tune, I really appreciate it. You guys have some awesome parts at awesome prices. And awesome sweaters. And awesome sweaters. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think, I think we can leave it off here. I think this is, this amount of info. All right, all right, all right. We're gonna leave it off here. Thank you, Alex, for helping. As always, the build is coming along slowly but surely. Spring is around the corner and I can just hear this car driving. I'm excited. Uh, pretty soon we'll have the motor once we're done cleaning it. I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoy the video, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Do it right. Peace. Peace out. Later.